And I am back with uh, my LP, Kimono Box Fox, Bunny of Isaac. Uh, we had just taken out the Wretched, and uh, now we are going to uh, be a uh, civil servant and uh, offer the medical community some precious, precious plasma. I am going to activate the Two of Hearts here, which uh, doubles your current... Uh, fill on your containers. So I have one and a half containers filled right now out of three. So playing this will give me one and a half uh, red hearts. Each time you play the donation machine, it takes a half a heart. And uh, gives you a couple of coins. Preferably it takes red hearts first. But, uh, if it comes down to the wire, and uh, you are down to just faith hearts and half a red heart, it will start depleting your faith hearts afterwards. Uh, in general, don't use the donation machine uh, until you have done the boss to get your deal with the devil chance. Which, uh, sadly I will not get there. Again, we have a gauntlet room here. Uh, for the cave floors, um, it is also going to be Monstro and Larry's. So as long as it's a boss gauntlet floor, it's pretty much the same. Um, when you get to the depths, you start fighting things like uh, Chubb and Loki and Pete. But the first few boss gauntlets you get are generally pretty mundane and predictable. And uh, we'll feature these two uh, set one bosses. So they're not too hard once you know what's coming. Larry can be uh, the more unpredictable of the two, and uh, I do recommend you have the ability to clear a room with Larry. Either have a few bombs on hand, or a space bar item that can uh, take out one or two quickly. Maybe even a tarot card. But as you see, R Larry um, will often randomly path into you, and uh, it is one reason why you want, want to typically save the boss gauntlet for after the uh, boss proper, because there's a good chance that you will take some red heart damage on the boss gauntlet. Again, headshot Larry, so my uh, birdie had to pull double duty to kill both of those body segments before Larry actually died. I will hang on to the pad here, just because I don't have flight, and I do want to buy myself a little bit of uh, maneuverability for certain trouble rooms. Um, it would be nice if I could get some more stopping power. And unfortunately, I am not going to have enough health to uh, get that machine to detonate of its own accord. Once again, I do like to take risks here, and uh, I may drag this down to the wire with uh, just one hit left to take before I die. I prefer to keep things interesting on my runs. Here we've got Demon Baby, which, um, this is an unlockable for Eve when you complete the, uh, I believe it is Shale she unlocks this. It might be uh, clearing the cathedral. It's difficult to remember. Or the womb. Um, it's been so long, and I will probably be deleting my contents to confirm all that for you again, as this is intended to be an educational uh, series of LPs. Uh, the Demon Baby auto-targets enemies. He is like a friendly sentry turret. Here, I will actually pin these uh, knights in place, which unfortunately did not work out so well because of the layout of the room. And, uh... You can use bombs cleverly with proper placement and timing to make knights considerably easier to deal with as the bomb goes through their armor to uh, finish them off. Here we have an easy slot machine, which uh, considering my situation I will play. I have plenty of keys for that, plenty of money. and. Uh, don't get me wrong, slot machines as far as uh, a resource sink go were a good idea, 
But it's the sheer grind of waiting for the reels to spin up. You know, the very fact that you are not doing anything while you are acquiring resources that makes them an element of Isaac that needs retailer. There I actually popped my pill and lucked out and got balls of steel to deal with these uh, Mr. Maws. Um, an alternative version of gapers that can stretch their head out and uh, convert into Maws when they are killed, which are mobile horfs. Uh, you will normally find them on the caves and or depths floors. They are considerably rarer on the caves uh, second set floors. Lots of pooters here. And I am literally being battered by an artillery of mixed tiers, which again, when you got mixed enemies, uh, they're firing in different patterns, so you're more likely to get hit. But I'm going to pull through this. Uh, it may not be a perfect run, and some people will consider perfection the mark of a really great player, but um, I am going to endure. I am not going to uh, curl up in a corner and suck my thumb because I am taking damage here. Here we have Globins, another uh, retread on the uh, Gaper formula. Globins collapse into a puddle that regenerates indefinitely, so you do have to keep them exposed to damage. Uh, here we have Safety Cap. Safety Cap increases the spawn rate of pills. And a pain room there, which I might get into at a later date, but this late in the game I am not going to damage myself. Um, I need my red hearts more at the moment. Uh, not an especially high level game, so to speak. And uh, some runs with Eve will be harder simply on account of the fact that uh, you don't get the items you wanted. She is not as uh, forgiving as uh, Isaac when it comes to the so-called troll engine. But uh, push through, persevere. And um, Eve does have her moments. So here we've got a rough room. I don't have any bombs for these knights. What I'm actually going to do here, um, I think these guys do path around the fires. It would be nice if I could get them to walk into that fire. But uh, I'll let the demon baby kind of be my co-pilot there. They're like, I got a lucky hit there where they walked in and damaged themselves. Uh, the thing with knights is they turn when you are adjacent to them to face your direction. <laughs> So they are always walking toward you. Uh, they don't deliberately chase you like Globins or Mr. Maws or Gapers or even Gurgles, but uh, they will inevitably hit you if uh, you are not wary, just based on the behavior of their turning. Here we've got one of our first rooms with turrets in it. And uh, turrets can be stunned with abilities like the, uh, the pad. But you will notice there are bugs um, related to that. And in this case I actually tripped over uh, blood from the brain that was there. I will go ahead and replay. And I did get a Curse of the Labyrinth here, which um, this time around I am actually going to scum this which I normally would not do on a run, but uh, I feel like it is somewhat redundant to be playing two Curse of the Labyrinth openers in a row. And uh, this time I got Curse of the Lost, so more rooms on the first floor. And here's a free room with a free bomb and some flames I can put out. And here we actually did get one of the... Uh, more beneficial upgrades for Eve. This is the thin or odd, uh, the small, thin, moral odd mushroom, I guess you would call it. Uh, the small odd mushroom shrinks your hitbox, so you're a harder target, 
which is very big for Eve because it complements her Whore of Babylon size increase. Um, and it also complements her by uh, giving you a higher rate of fire on your tiers, which uh, is separate from the regular tier stat, I believe. So if you combine this with uh, activating Whore of Babylon, um, they are one of the setups that makes Eve not a shitty character, in fact. Uh, they complement each other quite well. So again, I'm cleaning up these mulligans and uh, the spooter that has spawned out of the mulligans. And I did get a faith heart, which I will come back for. Two gapers here. Uh, getting very much more forgiving room layouts here. And with Eve, it's always about room layout. Because, uh... With Eve, you have to have more evasive maneuvers to make up for the longer period it takes to kill things. Uh, you can't just, uh... Super out damage enemies before they reach you in a lot of cases. So Eve does to some extent rely on mo more forgiving early rooms. Here we actually got really lucky and got a dime, 10 cents, in a coin drop. And uh, a more difficult room with some hoppers that thankfully doesn't have any flames in it. And a champion hopper that's actually a good thing because uh, we will get resources out of him. Uh, champions are usually a bigger problem for Eve because uh, they tend to have more health, but uh, the resources are always welcome. And here I am going to gamble away the uh, the bomb on the uh, spiders to the face or uh, brimstone factor. And I did not get a super secret room above. I did get a uh, an increased return though. I got my bomb back one to one. And two coins, which sets me up nicely for the store if I can get a key. I really should not have grabbed that faith heart when I did. And what I will do here is use the behavior of the bomb to uh, kill a few of these gapers at the same time while collecting the contents of this uh, faith rock. And that actually was able to kill two of them. I do have to watch this corny poop. And one of them converted into a gusher there. Uh, and I traded a bomb for a faith, uh, faith heart there, which is uh, a one-to-one -one trade. Usually faith hearts are sold for five cents in store. Uh, occasionally I can get better results out of faith rocks. They'll drop two, or they'll drop bombs as well. I'm going to take the fight away from that corny poop now that I have the option. And this is actually a uh, another variant of the uh, gusher. I guess you would call it a neutered gusher. It's called a pacer. Uh, it does not shoot any kind of projectiles. It does hurt to touch. But uh, they don't move very fast. They're not a very major threat. Uh, the main thing they do is uh, tank damage for packs of gapers. So they do act as a way of making groups tougher. Uh, since I've already started grabbing the Faith Hearts, I will go ahead and proceed with that strategy. Normally with Eve, you want to get in her uh, Red Heart damage on the first floor, where you don't have an assured deal with the Devil, because then uh, that helps you to temporarily overcome her weaker damage. Uh, and then you can just wear a suit of uh, Faith Heart armor over that, and uh, get through the first few rooms with a, a higher damage output. And that's the key to Eve, is uh, transforming her, Jekyll and Hyde style, and knowing when to transform her. Uh, which I really have not been uh, using that aspect of her as much lately. Um, I could have gone up to this pain room if I had been careful about uh, my behaviors and not just saw power up and grabbed it. But I didn't. And uh, now if I want to do it now, I have to waste Faith Hearts. So I am cheating myself out of one of Eve's uh, essential power-ups. Here we have Steven, who uh, is another version of Gemini. 
This version is, uh... I would say... Slightly more dangerous in the fact that his smaller half can split off from him while the large half is still alive, as demonstrated. Uh, so he's more of a melee threat than a projectile threat. Um, the other thing you've got to worry about with Steven is when either of his parts die, they explode into uh, a multi-direction tear shot. So you, have, you do have to be careful not to stand right on top of them when you finish them off. Now with the Gemini variants, um, the small half does get pissy and uh, get a speed boost and start chasing you. And he behaves much like an attack fly. Um, your tears will knock him back. But one thing you have to be careful about is when you're dodging these corners, if you're shooting, your tears can actually cause him to deflect around and uh, end up battering into you. Here uh, we have Steven, which uh, is a damage up, which uh, also syncs quite well with the uh, small odd mushroom I acquired before. And uh, that's going to make me more on par with uh, a character like Judas. So, uh... I actually did get quite lucky with my drops in this run. The last run was an example of how Eve can turn out promising, but not so great. Um, and I am going to get into gambling a little bit here with this pain room, just to introduce you to the concept of what pain rooms are actually good for. Um, you will see these a lot, and uh, you will go around them because they are quite costly. But in the early levels when you have a lot of health and uh, you're not worried about losing it on a devil room but you have very little in the way of resources <laughs> running over these <sighs> takes away a full heart each time you step on them with uh, the unique factor of not taking um, a full heart if you're half of a faith heart and half of a red heart um, the way damage works in this uh, it can't take um, half from one type of heart and half from another. So I actually did get an extra hit in there. Um, I was not so lucky this time. I got a locked chest to spawn. But basically how a pain room works is once when you damage yourself enough times, a chest will spawn. And uh, that chest is there to allow you to get uh, the resources to progress further uh, and get a better setup. So when you see them early, you do want to consider using them, especially if you don't have bombs or keys. Uh, if I had gotten lucky and gotten just a regular chest, I might have gotten a bomb to open this. Uh, and uh, it might have been a domino effect from there, where I would get keys and explore the store and uh, just get more off of that floor. And uh, that's what pain rooms are all about, is squeezing more out of the floor. Uh, again, doing terrible with my luck here. Dodging into these gusher, gusher shots, which, uh, random fire enemies, um, if you move more, you're more likely to get hit, and, uh, you need to watch for a second to see where they're going to shoot before you move. Um, sadly, the more of them you have, the more likely you will get hit anyway. Uh, aimed enemies are more straightforward, you just path around and keep moving ahead of their shooting. Here we've got an arcade, and uh, I have taken red heart damage here, so I will play it. Get myself a little bit of extra money, and uh, activate my whore mode. Which uh, is greatly complemented by the fact that I am smaller. I am regular Isaac size, maybe a little bit smaller than that still. And I did immediately blow up that uh, slot machine for another chest, and immediately got the... Scatole, which uh, is rare because usually you will spend a lot of time and resources gambling before you get the Scatole. Uh, to elaborate, the Scatole is the one pedestal item that is always dropped by the Shell Game Gambler. When you win it, the Shell Game Gambler disappears, and uh, it's a one time upgrade that um, nerfs all fly type enemies. Uh, they love you because you have poop on your head now. 
I will demonstrate some of the different ways it works as I explore the next room. And I will deactivate whore mode simply because I already have a lot of uh, damage upgrade here and uh, I want my smaller hitbox. And I do want to have that one extra hit I can take before I croak. But um, obviously it doesn't work against spiders. And I will go ahead and check the store here since I have money. Alright, now I will go ahead and grab the battery, which uh, gives me recharge over time as uh, I explore rooms with enemies in them. And I will play this uh, blood draw just to activate my whore mode. And uh, now I will go back and get shielding. And this is ideally how you play Eve. is You get abilities that compensate for her low starting stats. You activate her Whore of Babylon to help with her low starting stats. And you get shielding to deal with the fact that you're operating off of half of a uh, red heart while you're activating Whore. And that sets up for the late game where you can take advantage of her bird more often. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to tear down this boss. Unfortunately, I did not get a key in that store. Another uh, Gemini alternative. So I'm actually getting quite a lot of Gemini here. This is the Blighted Ovum, which um, is basically an area denial version of Gemini, as opposed to straight uh, melee chasing. He fills the room with creep. The ghostly form of him is actually invincible. It does not have hit points. It dies when the uh, large body dies. And uh, the small body fires a brimstone laser instead of firing tears at you. So now I've got wire coat hanger, an increase in tear productivity. And another red heart for which I can play the blood donation machine. Uh, it's looking like I'm coming down to the wire here where if the secret room is not in a good place, I may lose out on uh, the chance for that loot room, which is a situation you drastically want to avoid in Binding of Isaac. Um, but to confirm that really quickly, I am going to peek into the secret room, play it risky, and lose my half heart because I am greedy. Um, I am actually Greed's female cousin here. Um, and I did luck out here, I got the pact. Uh, the Pact for the Uneducated um, is a Devil Room item that uh, slightly increases your damage, and it gives you two Faith Hearts. Um, apparently it also increases your tier rate, which I did not know. Uh, yet another uh, information correction that spider Mod has given us here. Um, but a feature of the Curse Room is that if the secret room is adjacent to the curse room, there will always be a door to access it there to give that away. So I know that the curse room is not linked to the secret room, and therefore I know that the secret room is not here because the curse room is always linked to the secret room if it's there. So it might be here. And sure enough it is. And I do have the bombs to bomb into the loot room rather than using a key. So, um, like in my first episode, as demonstrated, uh, the secret room can bridge locked up rooms and not just the store. It can also get you to the loot room if you're otherwise SOL. Here we've got a space bar item, the doctor's remote, which um, is a targetable, uh, rechargeable bomb that recharges every, um, I believe it is three rooms. I do have a little bit extra in terms of faith hearts here. I am going to play it risky, and I'm going to go away with a little extra in the way of uh, money. Target that with the uh, doctor's remote to save myself a bomb. And uh, I'm a little disappointed there. Uh, sometimes the donation machine, if you play it enough, will destruct on its own. And uh, it drops a blood bag, which is a heart container upgrade, and a health refill, which would be fantastic right now, but... Some things just are not meant to be. Now, I do have two uh, synced items here. 
I have got the um, the remote here, which uh, the remote um, will be my space bar, and then the battery will gradually recharge my remote, so I will get more uses out of my remote than I normally would. Oh, an unfortunate room full of chargers, which, uh, chargers, again, are similar to, uh, those, um, I'm trying to think of the name of them. They're those crocodile-ish, uh, enemies in Link to the Past that, uh, appear in the fifth Dark World dungeon. When they line up with you, they dash at you. Here we have some Maw Shuts, is, uh, what, uh, I have nicknamed them. They are Maws. Uh, those uh, mobile horfs from before, but because these have their mouths sewn shut, they just cannot get the tears out. Uh, they will chase you instead, and when killed, they explode into a four-way shot, similar to how Clotty shoots. So you do need to be careful about where you're standing when you kill them. Similar to uh, Steven, and uh, Steven's little form. Gishes, cross shots. Which, uh, thankfully, the design of the room lets me get around that to a degree. And I do have a uh, doctor's remote charge here, so I am going to try it out on this wall. Just to conserve myself uh, charged for later. How spacebar, work, uh, how spacebar items work in this game is um, each different item has a rate of charge that it acquires from clearing a room with enemies. And when you kill off the enemies in the room, it acquires that amount of charge. Um, some of the more powerful, slower charging items only get a bar per room. In the case of the remote, it is two bars per room. So under normal circumstances, it will take three rooms of cleared enemies to fully recharge. Uh, the battery helps a little in that respect, giving me half of a cleared room uh, gradually as I go. These are hosts, and uh, hosts are some of the least popular enemies for new players, because new players will be tempted to shoot them a lot. And uh, under normal circumstances, uh, hosts don't pop up while you shoot them. Uh, we'll discuss that more as I encounter more hosts, but again, here we've got a regular maw and a maw shut. And uh, in a fight between the two, you typically want to clean up the uh, shooting maw before you kill the maw shut, just to keep the uh, complexity of the number of projectiles flying around in the room simple. Uh, you can predict the movement of the maw shut, uh, the suddenness of the tears, as well as the timing of the regular maw uh, shooting can be a little bit unpredictable and can get you hit if you're not careful. Here I'm actually going to Doctor's Remote again, test another wall, and in this case I lucked out, and uh, I got a room with a fortune-telling machine. Which, uh, fortune-telling machines are similar in behavior to slot machines. Um, they have a different drop table, they give faith hearts, uh, much more frequently than slot machines. Another theme of them is that they drop um, trinkets. Uh, they will give these useless uh, fortunes to you, which uh, don't do anything. Uh, they are rather annoying to see over and over. Uh, they do explode from time to time and pop into a chest. Uh, we'll talk about some of the other features as we encounter more. For now, I'm going to bomb into the loot room, and I will recharge my doctor's remote and come back for the... Uh, the store if I don't get the keys I need. Here we've got the common cold. Common cold um, causes your tears to randomly proc a poison effect, um, which the more tears you put out, the better it is. Uh, again, another item that syncs well with the uh, small odd mushroom, the moral. One cool thing with the poison is if it procs, um, it hits enemy through armor, like that host there. Um, even when he's down, we'll take damage from the poison. And uh, knights are the same way. So here now we have uh, another alternate 
version of mulligans, hives. Uh, these spit out flies non-stop. They don't self-destruct, they just wander around and spew attack flies. But as you'll notice, these are not hostile, and uh, that is on account of the scatole. Um, attack flies are made friendly with the scatole, and uh, other flies like pooters stop shooting and simply are drawn to you because of the poop. Here again, um, I do have a chance to bomb this, and uh, what I'm going to do here is go the more efficient route and uh, bridge, bridge over these holes. Yes, you can actually make a bridge using uh, explosives, knock rocks into holes. Um, so if you're ever wondering how you get to items like that, that is one way you can do it without flight. And uh, here I won't have to use the bomb, uh, so I effectively um, only had to use the charge on the uh, remote rather than the remote and the bomb. And uh, my net loss was reduced. Which, I mean, I don't mean to sound like an accountant, but more stuff is better than less stuff. Here we have the map, which reveals the location of... Uh, all non-secret rooms on the floor. It doesn't actually tell you the contents of the room, but it, re it reveals the map structure. And actually I'm going to be able to uh, afford all of these items here, uh, which is great. So uh, that was a perfectly good reason to blood draw there. I could have missed out on opportunities otherwise. And um, yeah, a good portion of those uh, hurt yourself to help yourself uh, setups are all about uh, squeezing that extra bit of resource out of a floor. Here I will bomb and bridge over for the extra faith heart. So I've got a lot to work with now. And I guess the reason you would say Eve is not popular is because she plays like a... Uh, She's like a fancy trick car uh, that doesn't have a really powerful engine running underneath of it. She can do a lot of interesting things that are very helpful in certain situations with her dead bird, but um, she doesn't have the overall stopping power, and you do have to uh, either take advantage of her whore mode to overcome that, or die. Which, uh, in the last few runs I've died, and uh, here I finally have gotten the, uh, the loot supplements I need to get her to come out of her shell. Uh, maybe not necessarily in the uh, way I would most like. I prefer more of a, a Blood Mage style, where um, I trigger a lot of her passive abilities. But I'm more just getting straight upgrades. Um, that would be something... You would see more often in a run with Isaac, naturally, what with all the re-rolling you can do. So yeah, I'm, I'm playing an Eve run like an Isaac run here, and it just happens to be working out for me. Chubb is toast here, and uh, we do have a Devil Room here now. And I'm going to grab the Cat of Nine Tails, which uh, I don't believe... Let's see, do I have stem cells this run? No, I do not. That was last run. So this will be my shot speed upgrade for the run. And uh, as you can see, my tiers quickly move along, which uh, means a shorter travel time, and uh, thus um, a shorter gap in leading, where uh, you don't have to predict quite as far ahead to hit enemies. Here we actually have an interesting feature. Um, this deal with the devil is uh, based on soul hearts. And occasionally you will get a soul heart deal that is always exactly three soul hearts. So um, if you are ever spawned soul hearts in a boss room and you have less than three, um, it is usually worth it to pick up three just in case this happens. So what I am going to do here is I am going to get both of these items. Uh, this is uh, Guppy's Tail. And uh, what Guppy's Tail does is to increase 
the um, appearance rate of chest spawns. The other item here is Guppy, or the cat, which um, gives me 9 lives, 8 extra lives, but the catch is, each time I die, my heart container value will be reset to 1. I am actually going to take this, believe it or not. Um, it is a feared item, it is not a popular item, but there are ways you can make it work for you, and I'm going to try to demonstrate those now. <laughs> So the first thing you'll notice with uh, the cat, which um, can be a very helpful exploit, is um, the cat automatically sets your heart containers to one. So if you actually end up with exactly zero heart containers from taking the cat, um, you only lose one heart container as a cost for it. So it's actually cheaper in certain situations like that. Uh, the other thing is... Um, in this situation, um, I have three Faith Hearts, um, and if you go into a zero value of health with three Faith Hearts or more, you will not die in a Devil Room. Uh, the one exception is if you are already in negative health and you have Faith Hearts, that is negative Red Heart health, and uh, you make a deal while in negative health, it will kill you. But... Um, that's neither here nor there here. I'm actually going to deal for the tail now. Now I have two of the four existing Guppy items. The other two are Guppy's head and Guppy's paw. And uh, you will notice I got the mini mushroom as an effect. Uh, I should explain what Liberty Cap does really quick. Uh, Liberty Cap activates in each room you enter a random effect from one of the mushroom power-ups. And uh, that's why my size keeps changing here. Um, the combination with another existing mushroom effect can be wonderful, or it can be horrible. For instance, if you already have a large size increase mushroom, getting another makes you even bigger of a target. So yeah, poopy bad thing, as a, as a ego raptor would put it in sequelitis. Which uh, you should totally go watch, by the way, as well. Uh, gotta love the internet. Um, I mean, I love having your attention, but uh, I am not one of those uh, whore of attention types. And uh, I like to be friendly with my neighbors. Uh, he's a cool guy. Northern Lion's a cool guy. Uh, and uh, we all love these kind of games, so kick-ass stuff. And uh, if you watch me, or if you don't, if I get uh, hits or if I don't, uh, that is not the concern of this video. It is simply that I can instruct you and uh, maybe entertain you a little bit, too. Um, I know I don't have as cool of a voice as uh, some of those guys, and uh, I'm also shy, so I don't uh, work on my dialect or my dictation quite as much. But uh, I'm an egghead when it comes to this game, and I experiment with a lot of things. Uh, I have a good aesthetic sense of how the game works. And I like to break the game, which... Breaking Isaac is what Isaac is about. And, uh... Assuming I can get the right resources here, I'm going to show you a great use for the, uh, the cat power-up that you might not even know about. Or it could ruin my run, like it has ruined many other players' runs. But, uh, I like the challenge, and I accept the challenge. Uh, the ninja does not back down from the challenge. Boomy poopy! And you're dead. And I did manage to time that just right in between their intervals to where they would be popped up. So that's cool. Timing is a big thing with hosts. The other thing is, like Horfs, they will not trigger if you are about two-thirds of the screen away from them. So you can get out of nasty situations. And then you can Angle Shot, which I talked about uh, the momentum effect of Tears. Uh, it does look like I was incorrect about... Uh, 
the poison. It does not affect them while they are down. Knights always have their vulnerable area exposed, so I suppose that's why they take damage from it. And uh, dealing with hosts is largely about patience and uh, precision, precision shooting, whereas usually it's about dodging and evasion, like keep away. Hosts kind of mix up that formula. Uh, one thing with hosts... Hosts will normally not pop up while you are attacking them, but uh, if you do not hit them, uh, they will pop up. So if you're shooting a host repeatedly, and it's just sitting there, you need to uh, take your tears and your various attacks away from the host uh, so that it will pop up. And just be prepared to dodge to the side when that happens. And now I'm going to kind of precision explode that pack of maws. And amazingly, I am somehow getting through this without red heart damage. There's a devil beggar. Who, uh, Devil Beggar is, um, he's similar to a blood bank, uh, but he gives, uh, drops and items instead of money. Here I've got a ton of, ton of Globins who are splitting up and making life difficult for me. And, uh, the trick with Gaper-style pathing is you want to try and corral the enemies into a group, so they're all coming from one direction. If they split up and pincer attack you, uh, their superior cornering is going to get you hit. But if you can get them crowd into a group to where you can move in a straight line consistently without having to run into things, they're easier to dodge then. Here's a really big item for Eve to want, uh, the relic. And the relic is functionally a uh, soul heart dispenser. So every few rooms that you clear with the relic, the relic will spew out soul hearts. Um, I'm actually going to go for the boss now. One enemy to uh, have to dodge versus multiple. And if I take the red heart damage, uh, then I will change my strategy. I'm going to take the slow and uh, yeah, just let my, my uh, doctor's remote build up there. Uh, this would be Fistula, which uh, Fistula is another asteroids themed enemy. Uh, who sp splits into faster moving parts uh, as, I'm going to call Fistula a she, uh, just because it's like a a medical thing and it's found in mom. So, uh, a Fistula, if you're wondering, is a uh, unintentional passage opened in the body as the result of a wound that um, lingers. So, like, if you're a tranny and... Uh, you get that uh, new vagina put in. Uh, just make sure you're not pooping out of your vagina, because that is a fistula. Um, so sorry to disgust you a little bit, but uh, yeah, fistula splits into these smaller pieces, which are a greater threat, but the trick is that once you do enough damage, they downgrade into more predictable chargers. And once you can get enough of them downgraded to where there's not variety in the room, uh, the room is easier and I am not going to die! I will not die here! I re refuse, and I apologize for shouting in your ear, but um, I was not going to lose my uh, precious life there. I'm actually going to skip on that red heart for the moment and uh, stay in whore mode for the time being. Ooh, and that red heart really wanted to uh, screw me over in that respect. Uh, sorry for uh, having a little bit of a, um, how would you say it, PewDiePie moment. But uh, that was quite intense, and maybe I should have a cam of my facial expressions in this. Who knows? Uh, I don't know if you would find that interesting, or... Uh, if you find those kind of outbursts annoying, I apologize, but feel free to comment on the matter. Uh, he who is heard uh, develops the nature of the uh, show he is being heard in. Uh, so yeah, you can have your own little input, and uh, even own this uh, 
this Let's Play series to a degree and be uh, super awesome like me. So yeah, we uh, will go ahead and get down with our bad selves here and uh, go to this boss gauntlet and uh, lovely little, uh, sorry about that, lovely little setup with Claudies. Uh, I do admit I have a little bit of a tone issue where uh, my my volume gets cranked up when I get excited. So uh, here we have our very first super secret room of the uh, the LP super secret room, and uh, these have different contents from uh, normal secret rooms. Uh, they actually have prefab rooms. This is the uh, the red womb room, which uh, always spawns a set of red hearts. Like eight red hearts. This is good for floors where you do have a blood draw or a devil beggar, like uh, like I have in the other room, and I will be coming back to it. See, I hear. Unfortunately, I was kind of hoping for a heart container, so I would be able to pick up more red hearts. Um, I'm actually going to skip on that. I don't need the movement speed boost, and uh, that's one of the rare events where I will skip the boss gauntlet. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to play the Devil Bagger and uh, try and get some goodies out of him. Maybe the compass is what I'm hoping for, or a uh, a mark, or another Devil Room item would be kick-ass. He is considerably demanding, I must warn you. So, uh, if health is an issue, like your late game in the womb, and there are not a lot of health drops around, and you can't pull out, then, uh, don't work with the sky. But when you do have the abundance, because it's early in the game, uh, he can set you up for a much easier run. Make you more powerful. Make you do things that uh, are freaking kick-ass, and uh, I'm not going to waste a bomb on that half-heart there. Although, really I'm kind of in a dilemma now. I could continue trying to play the Devil Bagger um, simply to get his item, but I do want to hang on to my bombs, and most of these hearts are being accessed by bombs. What I guess I'll do now is, uh, since I have multiple pills here, is I will taste my pills. And uh, that one was a bad trip, which is kind of sucky. So uh, I lost a faith heart there. Pills will always have a prescribed effect that changes each run, and it is tied to the color of the pill. So the same color pill will always do the same thing, uh, but they do change run to run. There is a health up, which I very much needed, um, and I will visit the uh, boss room, I mean the uh, super secret room, simply on account of that, because now I can uh, haul more hearts, and um, I will actually make a repeat trip here, and uh, this may cost me in the long run, because I would like bombs to do the thing I'm wanting to do with the cat. But, uh, hopefully our buddy here will eventually be generous. And I do have a few bombs to try over and over until I get results with him. Which, uh, I do apologize for the grinding, but, um, I am, uh, demonstrating a little bit. And it looks like I'm only going to have two more bombs, so... I may as well grab the extra half heart, since I'm only going to get so many trips into that room. And uh, here he actually did give me the third uh, item of the Guppy set that I am looking for, Guppy's Paw, which uh, works with Eve's playstyle particularly well. And, uh, there's a little bit of a glitch here when you get your third guppy item, if it's a spacebar item. You'll need to put back the original spacebar item first to activate guppy mode. Um, guppy mode, which I have just activated on your third guppy item, gives you flight. And, uh, the other thing it does is when you deal damage, um, either by tears or bombs or familiar attacks, 
uh, you will spawn attack flies. And uh, if your rate of fire is as good as mine is right now, uh, that makes you a cold-blooded killer. Now I'm going to use Guppy's Paw to convert the uh, the heart container that I had earlier. Um, from what was it? Uh, from Pooty Pooty Poo. Uh, the pill I took, yes, the uh, the health up pill. And uh, now I have three more faith hearts, which is what Guppy's Paw does. It converts a heart container either uh, full, half full, or empty into three faith hearts permanently. Um, now I can get into that boss gauntlet room again, and I will go ahead and uh, I will go and do the uh, the uh, spoon because I do want to see what other drops will appear as a result of daring. Especially now that I can tear these bosses apart. I mean, look at that DPS. Having a high tier rate plus guppy mode uh, generally sets you up for winning the game. Um, it's like collecting the Dragon Balls. You uh, went to the trouble of uh, going in the distance, sacrificing your health, making the deals with the devil, and uh, braving the offers with the... Um, the Devil Beggar, so you, sir, get a gold star. And it is not one of those uh, Mom's Fridge gold stars. You earned it. So, Guppy Mode is something you can always feel proud of, and it is freaking awesome when it happens. Uh, and it is permanent, as long as you are alive. So, rejoice, and uh, if you're into furry, now you... Uh, you kind of have a swinging thing going on, and you're you're ready to go to Anthrocon or whatever. Which, uh, yes, uh, by the name, I I am a uh, self-confessed furry, and uh, I don't get into the whole costuming thing. Although I am getting into uh, theater arts and uh, stage makeup and stuff, so I might fool into that uh, if that's your kind of thing. So just just a random comment there. Now I do have kind of a conflict. Uh, I can either choose to go on with the uh, remote and supplement my uh, my bomb supply, or I can go with the paw. In this case, however, I am going to take the paw because it couple complements uh, it complements the dead cat. When you die, uh, you can go from just having the uh, one heart to having three. Uh, so, tripling your amount of hits you can take right there. Almost tripling. I mean, the last hit still kills you, but... Anyhow, I'm babbling. Now we are moving on to the third set, which, uh, to this point in my LPs, you have yet to see. Uh, that would be the Depth slash, uh, Necropolis. And, uh, these start to open up the floors a little bit more. Uh, they're less determined based on uh, rocks in the way and holes, although occasionally you will get rooms like this one where there are still holes. But uh, there will be spikes, which uh, flight can help you conserve your health resource more once you get to the third set. Um, and I'm actually going to let these faith hearts collect for now, because I might end up using my nine lives. And I will want to collect those when that's over with. Some bomb flies here. Uh, a little more asteroids fun. Uh, just bouncing around all over the place in diagonal paths and uh, exploding when they're killed. Um, and as with all explosives enemies, uh, you can use these uh, bomb flies to quickly shortcut into areas without wasting as many resources. I'm really kicking butt now. I got the Miter, which uh, the Miter increases the spawn rate for Soul Hearts, as Spider Mod so helpfully tells you. Uh, in Vanilla Isaac without mods, it just says you feel blessed. So um, Edmund McMillan did want uh, these upgrades to be a little bit mysterious to where you had to experiment to really figure them out for yourself. But I find that some of them are just so obscure that uh, if you aren't 
not so experienced, you might not know. And uh, becoming more experienced without it being frustrating uh, could be as simple as uh, watching my LPs and uh, having me straight facedly tell you. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you uh, don't want me giving away the effects of things quite so much. If you want me to play dumb a little bit, uh, that's, that's okay too. I can play dumb a little. Uh, I may not be able to make it feel like I'm playing the sublime because I totally am not. Uh, like uh, I know the draw of a lot of players like uh, PewDiePie um, does a lot of blind stuff and uh, just uh, gets a lot of his attention over how dramatic he is. But um, if my if my educational thing works for you, and I really shouldn't have grabbed that faith heart. Uh, if you like my educational thing, I can keep it. Um, if you want me to uh, shut my damn gob, uh, you just say, Kimono Box Fox, uh, you talk too much. Shut up, man. Slow down. But, uh, yeah. So now we've got a regular gauntlet, and uh, these open when you have full heart containers, um, as opposed to just exactly one or less red hearts. So if you have any red heart damage... Um, you are SOL for these ba babies. Although, if you have a half a red heart and you have soul hearts, um, I believe that it does um, open for you. Now, these do not assure pedestal items. Um, sometimes you will find one, like the map or the compass, but normally you will only find a chest or a locked chest in these. And uh, with locked chests, sometimes you will still get a pedestal item out of them. Um, but do do think about that. Uh, they're less resource friendly than boss gauntlets. Excuse me there. Here we have a champion version of Fistula, which uh, is slower and uh, it spawns bomb flies instead of charger maggots. And at this point in the game, we're starting to get to that, uh, that Mega Man fighting duplicates of the bosses part, where, uh, early bosses become regular enemies now. So, like, Larry will show up in random rooms, and, uh, occasionally Monstro will show up, and other enemies, like Chubb is a pretty common one. Lots of brains here. I can fly over the creep that killed me last playthrough, uh, simply because... Um, I have the flight, and I have plenty of faith hearts here, so I may as well check out the uh, the uh, room here. I guess my relic spawned a faith heart there. I don't think I've ever seen it drop quite like that before. But um, since it's in this room, I may as well grab it. And I am still drastically starved for keys. So what I'm going to do is go over here to the slot machine and play it a little, and uh, try to get myself a key. And I did get Pretty Fly, um, an orbital power-up, which, uh, like the Meat Cube, uh, deflects... It deflects tears, but these are a weaker, easier-to-get version. Uh, they do not damage regular enemies. Uh, they will kill small flies, and there's a second one, so I'm even more shielded now. When you're playing as Eve, or in general any character who has grabbed a power-up that makes their hitbox larger, it is almost crucial that you acquire orbitals to uh, field out a lot of the incoming tiers that uh, would otherwise damage you and whittle away at your run. Um, getting these orbitals can be life or death. Um, especially when you get up to bosses like Isaac, they shoot a absurd number of tears. And I actually maxed out my pretty fly there, uh, which uh, this is one of the big draws of the slot machine, is uh, it does have the random chance to give you that orbital power up. So if you're taking a lot of hits, playing this might be a good idea. Um, I am going to go straight to the boss now, since I'm not having luck in that regard. 
And I suppose I can take the uh, the red heart here since, well, no, I don't have the container for it. For some reason, I was seeing the illusion there of having a uh, partially empty heart container. Here is Gish, which, uh, as a boss, Gish um, is similar to the Harbingers, only ever spawns one explicit item. Or like uh, Krampus, for that matter. Now, the uh, bomb Gish spits will um, hurt you much like a regular bomb. The creep is not damaging. Uh, the creep actually slows you if you do not have flight. Uh, it is negligible with flight, so do not be afraid to maneuver into it to dodge. And uh, other than that, Gish is basically just a uh, variant on Monstro. Now, when Gish is defeated, Gish spawns Little Gish, which is a uh, shooter familiar. And uh, the advantage of Little Gish is uh, when Little Gish hits enemies, they turn black and uh, slow down. So they are easier to manage. And it looks like I may not ever use this, uh, this uh, nine lives, just based on how this run is progressing. I am going to go ahead and gather up these faith hearts and uh, blow up that slot machine since I don't have the monetary resources to play it. Although I could play the pain room really quickly since I have a lot of hearts. And uh, see what this spawns for me. A chest. Goody. Um, not so uh, me friendly there. I'm just glad it only took uh, two hearts to get it. The uh, combination of the miter and the relic you can really, say, really see pays off for Eve. Uh, even though I am only operating on one refillable heart, um, I have a massive constant supply of faith hearts. And I will go ahead and detonate this now. Which, uh, it spawned yet another faith heart. Unfortunately, I will not be able to, uh, visit the store to your viewers, as, uh, I am... Fresh out of keys. The only one way would be if that were a bomb's R key, which it wasn't. But uh, Tears Up is nice, and uh, that's a uh, loot room power-up in and of itself. So moving along, I am uh, fast becoming the uh, furry cat drag queen of flies. And uh, that, that suits me fine. That's alright. I can roll with that. I'm a flexible man, comfortable with his sexuality. And, uh... Here we have, uh, hangers, which are a functionally a runaway rogue shopkeepers, greeds. Uh, they like greed, and, uh, like the, uh, keeper enemies can steal money from you by damaging you, so watch for that. These swarmers are... Basically flying versions of the hives from the caves and catacombs. I'll talk about them a little more as I go. I'm just uh, trying to keep a steady pace to this video since we're having such a successful run here. Now with uh, the hangers, they will always get an eternal fly guarding them. And it is much like the eternal fly that hangs off of corny poop. So it does take more damage to kill. And uh, it is invincible until you kill off the hanger it is attached to. Tinted rock there. Faith rock. So that was a one for one free bomb, and I also got another faith heart out of it. So, uh, bully. Uh, you should be brave and, uh, always recognize when you have those gambling opportunities to, uh, grow stronger, because if you play a game and you stay constantly weak, uh, the one moment that you do take a risk, if it screws you over, you're boned. But if you take enough of those risks frequently enough, uh, they balance out, especially if you know how to handle the risk and uh, what resources it's going to involve. Here we have Mask plus Heart, which is a variant on the knight enemy. The, uh, the mask plays the role of the knight, but there is no vulnerable back half. They are invincible. Um, the heart half 
is the uh, mask's life, and each mask is linked to a specific heart, which uh, will attack you uh, like a clotty if you get close. It makes that uh, four-way cross pattern. The hearts themselves have a lot of health, twice that of a uh, eternal fly. And uh, largely defeating them is about playing keep away because the masks dash at you. And again, another example of gambling your resources. Um, I got the key back and then some. Uh, I might have just gotten the key back, which would have been a waste of time, but not a waste of trying. Uh, I may have lost resources, which uh, would suck, but I'd move on and adapt. But I got the uh, best case outcome. Here we've got a coin purse, which uh, is going to give me four random pills. And uh, since this is my last store, money is going to become a lot less valuable. I will go ahead and grab that. Here I've got a health up, which I'm not going to play just yet. I will play these tiers up. And uh, here's an unknown pill. Uh, we'll go ahead and buy the uh, tarot card, which is the Fool. That uh, teleports you to the starting room of the floor. Uh, the other pill here is Bad Gas, Poison Bomb, which uh, does not hurt you. It's very similar to the Bean Spacebar item. I will go ahead and use that against the uh, boss Gauntlet, and uh, get the treasure that it is uh, waiting for me. This would be the uh, Super Bandage. A, a reference to Super Meat Boy, and uh, I'm starting to talk in gibberish here from my brain overheating. Uh, it gives you an extra heart container and a few faith hearts to keep you going. The cool thing with faith hearts is uh, you can have more than 12 of them. They will go off screen. Red hearts, uh, you cap out at 12. So now that I'm on the Necropolis, you're seeing I'm running into uh, tougher caves-esque enemies. Uh, Chubb and uh, Peep here uh, is making an uh, appearance from our last video, I believe. And as you can see, the run here is uh, going incredibly smoothly, and I am leveling up uh, much faster with much more uh, direct stat upgrades as opposed to utility upgrades. Uh, Eve generally wants a generous balance of both of them, but uh, she can get by this way a lot better than if all she gets is utility items. All these tier and damage upgrades and poison, uh, that is working wonders here to make up for her weaknesses. But uh, it's also really not playing to her strengths. Um, I would like to get some items that do use my red hearts as mana so I can use the bird more often. Um, here we have a regular beggar who takes coins instead of half hearts, um, and he's a little bit less greedy than the devil beggar, um, and he will occasionally drop out little drops to uh, help mitigate your coin loss. Key bomb. Uh, eventually you can get him to drop what you really want. What I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to grab this deck of cards and I got the devil there which uh, will effectively double my damage output for when I want to tear down mom. It lasts for a room. I never actually did use that bad gas pill so I might take that. Judging just by the distance I'm going to have to run I probably will not come back here. Uh, I do want to keep this run smooth and entertaining. Um, it depends on when I find money though, because that that devil beg or that little beggar is appealing. Once my mouth gets started, it's like a minigun. Like I may uh or have a few blanks there at the beginning of a particularly rough day starting an LP, but oh my god. It would make the heavy weapons guy jealous, my mouth. Here we have um, a range upgrade, which uh, we actually can make use of. You can see my tears now cover almost the entirety of the room. So I'm going to have a much easier time hitting those dangerous to approach enemies. 
And uh, just staying at the outskirts of the room and dealing damage. Uh, there's a certain hill that, once you cross it in a uh, Binding of Isaac run, and you've got to that degree of power, uh, you're not going back down very easily, unless you just get like uh, carried away with a uh, blood donation or something. Now, because there's a little bit of awkwardness in regards to how Mom's room works, um, the Devil Room does not normally spawn, even when it does spawn. So, I'm not really worried about my Red Heart damage here. I am going to uh, Blood Donate, though, because once you get into the Mom Room, uh, you cannot leave without a Teleport. And I do kind of want to play that uh, Bagger. I did not think it would come to this, but it has come to this, so let's uh, make a quick backtrack and uh, grab that heart drop that's sitting there. And I'm going to take a peek at the store really quick. There is this uh, health up, which I suppose I won't be coming back for this, so I may as well. And I will pay for the... Uh, extra heart, because I can gamble that away. What I can do here, since I'm running back to the blood donation machine, I'll use the Fool to quickly skip over a few floors and uh, spare myself some runtime. How clever is that? Even uh, weaving the functionality of Isaac items into the length of the LP. <laughs> Who needs video editing? <laughs> Well, I might, but I am not so software savvy, so I'm actually going to spend some of my faith hearts here and uh, try to get this machine to blow up, simply because I do have all these faith heart sources. And I actually did get the IV bag there, which is uh, one of the items that turns Eve into more of a blood mage. I may come back for it. But I do have uh, Guppy, the uh, cat, so, oop, what am I thinking? All that talk and boasting, and I did it anyway. Um, I may come back for the IV bag, but uh, the passive items I'm getting this run really aren't turning even to a blood mage so much as just a straight up uh, shooter type character like Isaac. Or uh, Cain might turn into. And Isaac and Cain are all about being able to control their build, because Cain can never get bad pill effects with his lucky foot. And uh, Isaac has more control over what passives he gets by being able to reroll items he doesn't want. Um, Eve is more about being a smart player and uh, activating her transformation or bird to conserve your resources. Which actually at this point I could continue to IV bag if I uh, want to reactivate my whore mode. And uh, I do have the paw for the empty containers and there's High Priestess I could use for a large amount of damage on an enemy. So many options when it comes to Binding of Isaac, um, but I think I'm just going to go for the Devil, simply because it um, has the overall benefit, it's not a one-time use, it'll last the entire room. But yeah, I will bleed myself out, and that was a little bit of a weird bug there, my uh, screen just flickered, I don't know if that'll display in the video, but give me money! The cool thing with the IV bag is you can take advantage of the Mercy Invincibility period to use it multiple times. And with Eve, um, 
Okay, first of all, if you take a hit, you flash, which gives you a second use. So you can use the IV bag, IV bag, IV bag, the IV bag uh, twice per half heart normally. When Whore of Babylon activates, it actually makes your Mercy Invincibility last a little bit longer. So you can activate it four times. Uh, one to activate the Whore of Babylon, and then three in addition while your Mercy Invincibility wears off. So if you're aware of that, you can quickly turn rich uh, as Eve with the IV bag by getting so many extra uses in. And what I can do now is, even if I don't find red hearts, I can convert those empty containers each into three faith hearts. So I'm set for shielding here. And uh, now it is time to take down Mummy Dearest for my very first time on this LP. Let's see, which flavor of mom will we get? And uh, this is actually going to be regular mom. I apologize, I am getting a rather tactless friend calling me here on Skype. Which I'm probably going to have to close out of in the future when I do these LPs. Um, he is actually aware of the fact that I am setting these things up. So, hopefully he will not call back. And, uh... Just on the fact that I was so well set up for Mom, I didn't have a lot of time to talk about her with that whole debacle. So, I will grab that container, and I am going to switch out the Liberty Cap now for the Polaroid. Because if I plan to get to the chest floor, I have to carry the Polaroid with me to the uh, fight with Isaac. So yeah, um, I apologize if you have not seen this far, I, there will be spoilers here. And uh, this is as far as you normally can get in Vanilla Isaac. The first time you beat Mom, uh, you will be immediately sent to the, uh, the win screen and see the end of the game, uh, which is pretty exciting and cool for you. So um, I am sorry if I spoiled that. I guess I probably should have announced uh, the fact that there would be spoilers. But I will be going down into Halloween Update and uh, Wrath of the Lamb content now. So I am now entering, of all things, oh, busted on the John again. Uh, the womb, my mom's womb to be specific. Um, floors after the depths are unique in two traits. One, they do not have stores. Two, they do not have loot rooms. So keys and money immediately become less useful. Um, there are a lot more floors, rooms I should say, on the womb floor. So there are more enemies buckling down to try and get you killed. I am temporarily, go temporarily going to grab the fish head here. Uh, for that reason, I really should have been watching where I was standing. Double Monstros. Uh, one thing to point out here is this is not a boss gauntlet. This is a regular gauntlet room. Uh, when you get to the womb and beyond, gauntlet rooms start throwing bosses at you. So, uh, the regular boss, uh, the regular uh, gauntlets actually become tougher than the boss gauntlets. Because you still have to fight three waves of enemies. Like, there I fought Chubb, Larry's, and uh, Monstro. So I'm going to continue to do this floor with the dead fish, because it spawns attack flies when I take damage, which will make clearing out the floor easier. And uh, then I will simply come back for the Polaroid when I'm ready to move on. Now there's this Resident Evil-esque, classic Resident Evil, I should say, element of switching out for items that are more useful for the current expedition you are on. Like, uh, I mean, I know this is a little off topic, going on to Resident Evil, uh, you would have item trunks and a limited inventory space, 
and uh, you basically made multiple expeditions, and between your expeditions, uh, you would stop at a save room with a typewriter and uh, break into a trunk full of items you had stored that you had found, and uh, you would pick out the best ones for a particular situation, be they, uh, like, key items that you needed to uh, get past a certain area to get you past enemies, or ammo, or health items, or what have you. And uh, there's just an element of juggling uh, your limited inventory capacity, and uh, that does carry over in this game, uh, in the form of your spacebar item choices, and your uh, trinket choices, and even your pill and card choices. Um, another th factor I forgot to mention in the uh, Womb and Beyond levels, the fourth set floors, I should say, is uh, that fourth set, uh, you start taking a full heart per uh, incoming damage. So uh, you effectively have half of the health you had in earlier floors. The one exception is if you uh, acquire the wafer passive item, which gives you damage reduction. So now I've got some leeches, and these are like uh, faster flying versions of the uh, charger maggots from the caves. And another fistula. Look at all those chargers, man. And a bunch of parabytes. Now, because there are no loot room or storerooms on this floor, I am actually going to finish it up quickly uh, in order to prevent uh, too much expenditure of resources. I don't want to get hit too many times and wear myself down. And uh, we have Skolex as the boss of the floor, which, uh, Skolex is similar to the uh, Lamnolas from uh, Legend of Zelda. He leaps up from underground and uh, is only vulnerable uh, in his tail portion. So either when he's jumping and about to land, or when he does this uh, tear spray move similar to Monstro, uh, those are the main times you can hit him. The rest of the battle you mainly want to focus on uh, just staying the heck out of the way. Like, you don't want to be anywhere around when he does that triple scatter bomb move. One cool feature of uh, these leaping bosses, Skolex and uh, Pin, is if you hit them with a movement altering attack, uh, they will stop their jump and uh, fall short and fall back into the ground. So you can actually hold them back with an ability like Little Gish or uh, Spider Bite. So now, having done that, I'm going to drop the dead fish, and uh, I'm going to run back to the Polaroid. And as tempting as it may be to explore this floor in full, well, I do have the miter and the, uh, the relic, so it might even be worth it to do that with the matchstick, get some bombs and whatnot. Uh, the matchstick, by the way, uh, is like the child's heart, except for bombs. It increases the likelihood that bombs will spawn. So yeah, another good trinket to carry early in the game would be the matchstick. Bit of a dime there, and uh, the game is basically telling me it wants me to uh, drag out the game on slot machines, and I, I refuse. I uh, got my Skatole, and uh, that is more than likely all I am going to need. Unless some drastic emergency occurs. Which, uh, it's not shaping up to be that way. It's actually getting to where I'm acquiring more resources than I am 
losing from floors that would normally be quite dangerous. There's a sort of element of uh, threat range in Isaac where you functionally level up as you get passives. And uh, in certain runs, your uh, level progression is more stunted than in others. So uh, you might go through a good run and uh, look at all these enemies that I'm killing and think, these guys are easy, but uh, they actually can be quite deadly uh, if your uh, progression isn't as lucky as mine has been this run. I mean, you've seen my other few runs. Uh, I wouldn't call them catastrophic, but they were um, short-lived. I think it's an interesting factor as far as constructing LPs goes with Isaac, because you will get some recordings that drag on for a long episode, and uh, others that um, you want to split up simply on account of failing and uh, not having enough time in the episode. And this is probably going to be one of my longest uploads thus far. Um, Probably going to have to go back and contrast with some other LPers who play this, just to get an idea of what is kosher. But I think I'm going to try and carry us all the way through this run without breaking it up. Because, uh, we're getting near what is looking like the end of a very successful run. And, uh, we can have our badass moment. Uh, hopefully you can have your badass moment and say, man, that was a rush. I ain't never seen anyone play like uh, that kimono, but uh, just let me know. And uh, if you want me to break things up um, to sort of add to the suspense when I get to run the successful, I can do that too. Um, I am here to uh, tailor myself to your interests to a degree. And I suppose as we get to know each other, um, I can probably set up some challenges and other uh Yeah, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Um Let's have a grand old time together. Ah, the womb. It is so empty after I have enacted my own personal apocalypse upon it. Uh, one thing to note about Womb 1 is the last chance to naturally get a deal with the devil. Um, past this, if you want deals, you need the Joker, and uh, Womb 2 never has a uh, devil deal because it only offers you a trapdoor down to shale. Uh, we're getting to that point in the game where I do decide, do I want to uh, go to the cathedral or do I want to go to shale? And uh, just based on the, the run duration, I'm probably going to go straight to shale to end the game quickly. Uh, not because I'm in any particular level of danger, uh, just because I kind of want to wrap things up. Um, let me know if it was the little episode that could have, and uh, you're disappointed by that choice. But, uh... That's probably what I'm going to commit to at this point. Like, maybe in a future run, if I um, am a little bit more aware of my time, or if I uh, start off with a bad run and uh, sag into the start of a good one, um, I might go to the cathedral and the chest. But with a run this easy, I don't want to make it too disappointing and uh, too simple. And uh, Satan's the more satisfying boss uh, to fight against, I feel like. Isaac, once you're tanky enough, um, he either brings it close to the wire, or he just goes down as a breeze. So I will play this uh, Devil Beggar now. And I am giving full hearts here. Uh, this is one thing to take into consideration. When you play Blood Draws and uh, Devil Beggars light game, uh, game kid, uh, is uh, they do take full hearts, not half hearts. Ooh. 
look at that massacre. That poor Envy. I, I ate I ate his babies and recovered like almost all of my red hearts there to be honest. Uh, yet another example, um Space Bar items are like the uh fine seasoning on a delicious steak. Um if you just eat the seasoning, it's not very filling. But if you combine that with uh, the proper timing and uh, the proper passives, space bars kick ass. So here we have my least favorite enemies in the womb. These uh, ice stalks. I am. Um, I actually don't have the name down for those, so shame on me, Kimono. Here we've got the uh, Deadly Sin of Sloth in twos. And again, you will start running into mini-bosses uh, later in the game. In just open areas, regular enemies. Two of clubs. Uh, doubles my current bomb count, so I would go from 17 to 34. Or if I have no bombs or one bomb, I am bounced to two bombs. We'll go ahead and check out the first room. And uh, nothing but a face full of spiders. Uh, that's that's going to be the story of my uh, Isaac LPN career. Face full of spiders. Gotta, gotta open up and take that face full of spiders like a good bitch. And uh, yeah, I think... Simply on the fact that um, the other highly popular LP here, Northern Lion, uh, does not like playing Eve a whole lot, uh, she's probably going to be my draw card, because um, uh, you don't get to see a lot of Eve runs with him, and I may turn it into a thing. Uh, who knows, maybe I'll actually get a run here where I get to use Eve properly, because uh, this, this one has been so far so overkill that um, Eve really hasn't had her chance to shine as much as the last few were so misfortunate. I think that's the thing with her. Eve, you kind of very carefully have to use her abilities to get into that sweet spot run where you're not being thrown so much luck that you don't get to see what she does and you're not being uh, so careless that you screw yourself over with her very technical abilities. Um, which which is fine if, uh, I mean, you, you would like to keep it simple. Um, Eve is not the character for a simple Binding of Isaac run. Uh, for those of you people who uh, want to play Isaac like a strategy game, some of Eve's moves make Isaac a little bit more like that. Especially in picking what items to get, if you can help it. Here we actually have Utero, which uh, looks deceivingly identical to the womb, but uh, has tougher enemies. Uh, so that was why I was running into those hearts there, which you will never really see in uh, the womb proper. I'm actually going to hold on to this two of clubs until I get towards the end of the floor. Uh, try and get as many bombs as possible before doubling my amount. Which uh, is good for all of the two bicycle cards. They all double one of your resources. Oh, you dirty little bitch. Having um now acquired cancer at a time where it is... um. At its most valuable, if you compare the degree of shots I'm putting out to with cancer, I am definitely going after Satan with uh, a bad case of cancer as a furry drag queen. So yeah. And uh, just because of my sheer rate of fire, coupled with guppy mode, I will be able to take down uh, the toughest enemies in minutes, if less. Here we have a demon doppel, which um, 
did not last very long, and these guts are all dying horribly. Um, I think my big regret with these incredible runs, another trinket I'm going to skip over for now, Isaac's Head, um, is that you just don't get enough time to commentate on the various threats and how to deal with them. The good runs almost turn into the bad ones, uh, so to speak. What I'm going to do here is, uh, because of this whole uh, he who dares mentality, and uh, the fact that I am so close to the end, is I am going to guppy down to one heart, and I am going to go into this boss gauntlet. So all of those containers are going off screen, and uh, since I do have an empty container here, I will hang on to that one. And uh, I did get a damage up out of that, as well as one of my containers back. So, um, that was a decent trade-off. And Loki, I am just going to completely wreck here. His tears don't even get through to me, even though I don't bother to dodge them. Just because of my orbitals. I get Monster 2 here, and he kind of bites me in the butt, but it doesn't even matter. My birds, my flies, they're all doing so much preposterous damage to this poor guy. And uh, I did get a I'm sorry, Faith Heart, there. And uh, my game's frame rate totally wigged out there for a second. Um, so I will go ahead and pop two of clubs now. And uh, now I have the Death card, which uh, is identical to the Necronomicon, but one use. Um, it does, like, I think between 20 and 50 damage to all enemies in the room. It's good for crowd control. Especially against multi-segmented bosses like Larry Jr., uh, it will kill them instantly, or almost instantly. It lives! Um, I am playing late game after having cleared most of the content, but for those of you who have played Isaac but not a lot of Isaac, It Lives is a stronger version of Mom's Heart that uh, appears after you defeat Mom, I think, six times, it might be nine times. Uh, it's hard to say, but it's identical to Mom in almost all aspects. The only major difference is just the amount of health it has, and the fact that it looks like a, an unborn Isaac, further implying that you are killing yourself in a run. Here we have uh, It Lives spawning knights, which uh, my poison seeps through their armor, so I can actually hit these guys from any direction, which is one of the beautiful things about the common cold or the uh, pinky eye, which we have not found yet. Now she's spawning Freds, and I do have to watch their uh, bomb and tear projectiles. Duca flies, and Duke is dead. And Shub, she really, really does not want me to get through all this, but it is to no avail because uh, Shub here is moving as slow as a sloth, thanks to Little Gish. And now Mom is wigging the hell out, and uh, from about a quarter of her health down to when she dies, uh, she will stop diving up. Uh, in between summons, and she will continuously drop these uh, creep generating explosives. Now, Mom, as far as bosses go, um, does not ever spawn a pedestal item. Um, she will spawn a chest up to like your uh, ninth playthrough, which um, each time ends the run and uh, an item is unlocked. Past that point, there, there are no items. And uh, all that appears is a hatch down to shale, and uh, this ray of light which takes you to the cathedral. Again, I am planning on going to shale this time around, uh, but as a second note, if a devil room did spawn here, 
Um, it would just go to this hatch again. It would be redundant, which is a little bit disappointing, but let's go ahead and head down to Shale. Uh, we'll save Isaac for next time when I have split the video up. And uh, Eve really seems to have a fixation with TP, so uh, on top of this, maybe she's into scat, I don't know, but ew, yeah, uh, not my thing. No, thank you, but... Uh, not much point in drawing blood at this point, it's almost counterintuitive. Uh, here we've got a champion demon doppel. I'm actually going to show you a cool trick with doppels. Set a bomb, move to the opposite end of the room, and have them blow themselves up. I will actually hang on to this uh, death card for a problem room here. And now I am even more ridiculously fast thanks to the bell. And unfortunately a dead end. And a Curse of the Darkness... Curse of Darkness did proc here. Um, what I'm gonna do here is hang on to the Faith Hearts generated by Mom's Pearl until I locate the boss room and then I will switch back. And Mom's Pearl does stack with the Relic and the Miter, so having them all is definitely a good thing. And I have spawned the small rock, which, um, after blowing up so many rocks, this uh, is unlocked. And it randomly spawns from a tinted rock and slightly increases your damage. So it's a little thank you for wasting all those bombs. Sloth just up and uh, revealed a secret room for me there. Got a Wheel of Fortune here, so there is a uh, fortune-telling machine. I could sit around and play that all day, but I ain't gonna. Oh, so many knights! And you are dead, knights. You'll excuse me if I pop the uh, the death card in this room just to thin out those hosts and uh, to weaken the greeds, because I do not want the greeds spawning shit all day while I get shot at. And uh, in some rooms, it's better just to recognize when the room is going to be a problem, and uh, nip it in the bud before it gets out of hand. Here we've actually got Death, who uh, is not starring as the boss of his own boss room here, although he could. Uh, and it's a champion Death, who uh, favors the ability to spawn uh, explosive leeches, I believe. He only spawns three sickles instead of four. But you do have to watch those bomb leeches. And part of why I'm having this slowdown at the moment is probably that I have Marker the Ninja running in the background, which is a totally kick-ass game, and you should totally try it, uh, especially if you like things like Don't Starve, because uh, Cly Entertainment did that. The Sad Onion. Massive tier increase, or it's supposed to be. Uh, less significant once I'm this stacked out with tier upgrades. But uh, now that I am up against Satan, I will go back and uh, grab Cancer. We'll get into what the uh, umbilical cord does there someday, I believe. Oh, oh. 
Look at all the Pokeballs! Just look at them! I choose you! I wonder if people are having Poke Battles in Hell. I mean, that would totally... totally be kick-ass. I, I, I'd go to Hell just to see that. I choose you, Satan Chew! But yeah, um, my failing attempts at humor aside, let's uh, go ahead and kick Lucifer's ass. Oh, no, it's Satan! Satan always starts by spawning the Fallen and uh, two Bomb Leeches. Occasionally, I believe he can spawn two Fallens instead, but this is typically the way you will see it played out. And you always have to fight the Fallen before you fight Satan, so... Know what to expect, he's basically the Krampus, except uh, he has a dash move, and uh, when killed, splits into two smaller versions of himself. Which I am tearing through. Uh, the second form is, uh, Satan comes and flies here, and, uh, shoots lasers, either centered from his mouth, or, uh, concentrated out of his hands. If he does the hands, you can, uh, dodge in the center. His third move, then, is to do the, uh, five-way, four-way shot. So he's a lot like, uh, a more one-directional version of the Fallen and Krampus. In this form, he becomes more like Mom. Uh, he has two legs at a time that he can stomp with, and uh, he consistently adds uh, two Bomb Leeches to the room, similar to how Famine would add uh, two Pooters or Fat Flies to the room. Uh, you have two ways of doing this. Uh, you can either continue to focus down the Leeches to blow them up, and uh, get the extra damage in on Satan. Or you can just let them be and uh, let them fly off to a corner of the room uh, where they won't be a threat to you, because he's never going to stop spawning them. And uh, that would be the end of the run. I uh, just totally wasted Satan on uh, my very first uh, attempt, my uh, first successful boss run here. And uh, then you will... Um, Come to this lovely ending, which uh, I will let you witness for yourself. Isaac's alter egos. And, uh, Isaac goes back in the chest. And, uh, that was the end. It's been a good run, and, uh, I enjoy enjoyed producing it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, this again, Kimono Box Fox. Uh, Feel free to subscribe, comment below, and uh, have a great week!